Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost here, and today I'm going to be going over a bunch of quick tips for new players. I'm going to be talking about things that the game doesn't teach you. I'm going to be talking about changes to the default settings that you should probably consider making. And I'm also going to give you a few quick tips on how to improve your DPS if you feel like it's lacking. There should be something in this video for everyone, whether you're a new player or a veteran. So let's begin. The first one on the list is that light attacking is what causes your ultimate to recharge. If we look at my ult charge down here at the moment, I'm at 33. And if I use an ability on this enemy, my ult charge will sit at 33. However, if I light attack the enemy, my ult will go up three at a time for nine seconds, giving us a total of 27 ultimate for one light attack. Here, we'll demonstrate it one more time. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and there we had nine more ticks of a ult regeneration this is one of many reasons it's very important to make sure that you light attack between abilities keep your ult recharging throughout your battle so that you can use it more often not only that but if you're wearing sets like relican or sororia they require you to light attack frequently to maintain your stacks so that they can continue doing tons of damage if you're wearing these sets but you're not light attack weaving very well these sets are actually doing you a disservice you'd be better off wearing something else if you're missing a lot of light attacks however light attacking is very important in this game so probably the best course of action is just to buckle up and get good at it just remember to left click right before you press an ability every time you press an ability light attack ability light attack ability just like that now you're weaving. Next up, let's talk about champion points. Did you know that champion points round down to the nearest percent? Yes, many of the champion points in the CP tree will round down. So this one here, for instance, says that it's at 22.08%. If I put another point into it, it will go up to 22.25. However, that point would be wasted because either way, it's gonna round down to 22% when making its calculations. Not every champion point is this way, but many of them are. So the safest course of action is to hit the percent break point and then move on to the next CP that you want to invest in. Next, let's talk about some incredibly useful options in the menu. First up, do you love looking at your screen but hate how big the UI can get sometimes and how much of the screen space it can take up? One of my favorite settings in the entire game is this one right here, interface. Use custom scale, slide this sucker to the left if you want to reduce the amount of space your UI is taking up on your screen so that when it's all said and done, your minimap is taking up less space, your health bar is smaller, compass is smaller, your chat box can be resized anytime you want independently of this setting. And then this way, more of your screen will be devoted to looking at the beautiful game that you're playing as opposed to looking at your interface. If you're a new player, another setting you should absolutely consider changing is the color of your visual effects. If red is hard for you to see in some areas, you can go ahead and change this to something like fuchsia to make it more visible, even when you're in those lava-ish terrains. Likewise, you can also increase the brightness of enemy forecasts, which is really helpful. If you ever find yourself accidentally standing in the red, as it's called, be sure to move this bar all the way to the right so that you can maximize your chances of seeing it before the enemy hits you. If you want to see how it looks, feel free to hit the test button so that you can see what it's going to look like. Here we can test the friendly. Here we can test the enemy. Another setting I highly recommend to change if you're a new player is turn off double tap to dodge roll. By default, this is the way we dodge roll in the game. However, you will absolutely kill yourself on accident while using this method of dodge roll because it is far too easy to accidentally dodge roll when all you're actually trying to do is inch yourself forward. A lot of times when you're getting close to something like the edge of a cliff and you wanna see what's on the other side, you will start to move your character closer to it. So what do you do? You start inching right and if you have double tap to dodge you'll accidentally inch and roll yourself right off to your doom I highly recommend changing double tap to dodge roll and turning it off and then binding it to something like mouse wheel up something on your mouse hand so that you can continue holding the direction you want to go and then hit the dodge roll button this is also nice because normally with double tap if you're running away from something you have to let go and then double tap in order to evade the in incoming attack. So there's extra delay in trying to get out of the way of something. Whereas you can just move and roll simultaneously if it's not on double tap, but instead on a button. If you're a new player, I highly recommend changing it sooner than later because eventually you're probably gonna wanna change it and it's only gonna be harder to change the longer you wait to do so. 
If you're a new player, be sure to turn nameplates on. This is going to tell you not only the name of the NPC that you're interacting with, but more importantly, what they are. For instance, it'll tell you if they're a merchant or if they are a stable master. Is it someone that you can sell goods to or is it someone that will upgrade your horse or is it the banker? If you turn nameplates on, you'll always be able to tell what the NPC is that you're walking past. I can't overstate how helpful this is for new players. Next under the gameplay tab, we have prevent attacking innocents. You can turn this on anytime you're not intentionally planning on murdering innocents in major towns in Tamriel. You're going to find that you accidentally click all the time in this game when you're running through a town or maybe you use an ability on accident and the next thing you know, you've got the guards after you. You've racked up a nice little fine because you accidentally hit and possibly murdered an NPC in town. This will save you a lot of headache. This will save you that drama. You can prevent attacking innocents. So just turn this on and then no longer will you be able to attack NPCs in town on accident. And then if you go to do a, perhaps a Dark Brotherhood quest or something along those lines, you can turn this off and start your rampage as planned. Next, we have quick cast ground abilities. I highly recommend that you change this from automatic to on. Quick casting ground abilities is gonna make it so that when you're using a skill, like for instance, Endless Hail, what we normally have to do if this is on automatic is you hit two and it brings up a circle, which then you have to locate and then place. So it's extra clicks, right? It's extra clicks, which when you're trying to do a light attack weave, light attack, skill, light attack. Now you have to remember to light attack again and then do your next skill. It's gonna make it really, really difficult to get into a good light attack rotation if that is not turned to on, okay? So now when I use it, it's just gonna go where I'm looking. Perfect, that's what I want. I'm gonna be looking at my enemy anyway. This is gonna really increase your damage. It's also gonna increase your light attack ratio because you're not gonna have to light attack two times in a row after random skills. All your skills will be the same. You use the light attack, then you use the skill. Then you use the light attack, then you use the skill. Then you use the light attack, then you use the skill. It's going to be very good for your damage. It's going to be very good for your light attack ratio. This is one that I consider a must. So be sure to make that change as soon as you can. Next up under gameplay, we have auto loot. This is an amazing option to turn on if you have ESO+. Plus. If you don't have ESO+, Plus, you might be a little bit strapped for bag space. So you may want to choose what you do and don't loot. Otherwise, this is going to be a huge time saver when you're running through a dungeon trying to keep up with your party. If you have this on, anytime you walk up to something that you've killed, it's automatically going to loot it for you. Lastly, I highly recommend turning your ability bar and your attribute bar to always show, especially when you're a new player. This will make sure that you always know what your health is at when you're running into your next battle. By default, it's on automatic and sometimes it'll hide them from you and you won't be sure which bar you're on as you approach the battle because the bar will be hidden or you won't know if your ultimate's up as you approach. So turning that to always on means that you can always see which skills are available, which bar you're on and if your ultimate's up or not. Next, just a reminder that your champion points actually give you the resources equal to the color that they are. Your blue champion points are actually gonna be giving you damage, your green is gonna give you sustain and your red is going to give you damage mitigation. However, every time you put a point into blue, it's going to give you magicka. Every time you put a point into green, anywhere in green, it's going to give you stamina. And every point you put into red is going to give you health. Your three resource pools are going to be increased by the first 100 points you put into each tree. After the first 100 points in each tree, these points stop giving you resources. So at CP 300, you will stop getting health, stamina, and magicka every time you level, which means at CP 300, your resource pools will be as large as they will ever be which is why veteran DLC dungeons require you to be CP 300 before you're allowed to queue up for them. Next, did you know that in Elder Scrolls Online, NPC mobs never crit? That's correct. In dungeons and trials and in overland content, the monsters attacking you will never crit you. The only time that people can crit you is in PVP. So unless you're actively PVPing on your character, you wanna stay away from passives like resistant, which is gonna increase your critical resistance. You also wanna stay away from impenetrable as a trait on your armor. And you want to avoid sets that give you resistance to critical damage because the NPCs will never be doing this type of damage to you. However, in PvP, it's exactly the opposite. You want to make sure to spec into critical resistance. Teleporting anywhere in the game can be done for a small cost just by clicking on a shrine that you've activated or by going to a shrine and then teleporting for free to another shrine. Also, a third option is that you can at any time teleport to any of the houses that you've owned by going to your housing and looking at your collected houses. 
And if you go to these houses, it will take you to the zone that those houses are located in. Which means if you leave the house after you've entered it, you'll then be in the zone that that house is located in. It's a nice free way to get from one zone to another if you're looking to save some cash. Another thing to mention about champion points is that every champion point that you earn on your first character will be available the second you create another character. So if you're CP 110 on your first character and then you make an alt, that alt will have 110 champion points to invest the second that it loads into game. This can make leveling your alternate characters a lot of fun as they'll feel very powerful right from the start. The next tip is that skills that you unlock will not level unless they are on the bar that is active when your enemy dies or when you turn in a quest. So when you're trying to level a skill or a skill line, make sure that you have those skills on the bar and make sure that that bar is active when the enemy dies or the quest is turned in so that those can benefit from the XP that is gained. It's worth noting that skill lines level in different ways. Your class skill lines level from experience that you earn, so killing things and doing quests, whereas Finder's Guild levels from specific types of activities such as Dark Anchors and Killing Daedra, and then the Mage's Guild, for instance, will level from collecting lore books. Every guild has its own way of leveling. Just hover over the XP bar here at the top to see how you need to level that guild. In Elder Scrolls Online, it's very important to make sure that you keep your gear repaired. If you don't repair your gear and a piece of armor breaks, it's like you're not wearing that piece of armor at all and you lose access to your set bonus. So be sure to right click on an item that is getting low and repair it with a repair kit. If there's no repair kit when you choose to repair it, that means that you either don't have repair kits or the repair kits that you have are too low level for the gear that you're wearing. And remember, never buy your repair kits from the NPC traders, always buy it from the player guild traders. The player guild traders sell them for about 80 gold a piece right now, and the NPC traders sell them for about 420 gold a piece. On that same note, however, is that weapons don't need to be repaired. Weapons cannot break, however, the enchantment on them can run out. This weapon has an absorbed stamina enchantment, and that will stop functioning if that bar gets to zero. So what you need to do with these is right click and charge them. This is going to use one of your soul gems that's filled to charge the weapon back up. This will ensure that the absorbed stamina enchantment continues to function. It's worth noting, however, that if you slot a poison onto a weapon, this is going to replace the enchantment. Now your enchantment is not going to do anything, but you will get the poison benefits. To recap, you cannot get the effects of a poison and an enchantment on a weapon at the same time. You have to choose one or the other. If you're wondering if you should run poisons, the answer is probably not. Poisons are only going to add a few thousand damage, which in the grand scheme of things is not very much. And they sell for good money to NPC vendors. So those poisons that you find while you're out, don't bother saving them. Just go ahead and chuck them to the vendor. Sell them for a good price. They're great money. And down the road, when you get into some really sweaty content, get yourself some double dot poisons or use the crown lethal poisons that you get from your daily login rewards. Next is a feature that I wish more games had. In Elder Scrolls Online, you can lock gear. So you can right click and lock it. What this does is, this makes it impossible for you to accidentally destroy it when you're at a crafting bench or at a vendor. It'll remove the ability to sell it, to deconstruct it, or to research it. It basically prevents this item from being destroyed in any way. Incredibly important for holding on to those items you don't want to lose track of. The next tip has to do with leveling up your armor. When you create a new character, it's very important that you put three pieces of each type of armor on at some point. By putting three pieces of a type of armor on, whether it's light, medium, or heavy, that's going to unlock that armor in your skill menu. Once you've equipped three of a type of armor on, you can go ahead and only wear one piece of it to level it up if you want, although it will level a little bit faster for each piece of armor of that type that you're wearing. So typically what you see a lot of characters do is run five pieces of the armor that they want to run and then one piece of the other two just to get them leveled up. Whether or not they're going to go 5-1-1 in the long run, this way they have access to all of the passives if they do want to unlock them later or if they ever find need of them. Next up, when you unlock your back bar at level 15, for instance, my back bar would have been a bow. So what I can do prior to level 15 and after level 15 is put a bow ability on the front bar. What this is going to do is ensure that every time I kill something, it levels up my bow skill line, whether or not I'm on the back bar when it dies. Since we spend most of our time on the front bar, most of the things we kill will die when we're on our front bar, which can leave your back bar falling way behind. This is an easy way to make sure the back bar continues to get experience. 
you're not going to be able to use the bow ability because it is a bow ability and it's on your front bar. All the same, it's going to level up that skill line. Have you ever wondered what all the different types of quests that you see around are? Well, there's three different types of quests in Elder Scrolls Online. First up is the main story quest. You can always find the main story quest by opening your map, clicking on open the zone guide, choose start zone story, and this will take you to the beginning of the zone story for the zone that you're in. This marker right here, anytime you see one that looks like this, this is a zone story. The zone story in each zone, once completed, will award you a total of three skill points and usually some cosmetic rewards as well. The next type of quest would be your side quest. This is what a side quest looks like here. It's a little black down arrow. Side quests can reward you with literally anything from a skill point to a cosmetic to a little bit of gold or maybe even a piece of gear. The third and final type of quest will be a greenish blue down arrow over top of the NPC's head or on a board. This designates a quest that can be done daily. Daily quests reset every day at the same time, regardless of what time you complete them. Dailies can be found in every zone with varying types of rewards and can be a great way to unlock cosmetics such as motifs. In Elder Scrolls Online, everybody gets a mount awarded to them at level 10. So once you hit level 10, you'll be able to hit your mount button. On PC, the button is H and that'll pull out your mount for you to ride around on. Now. The thing about mounts is they start off incredibly slow. If you come here to a stable master, and this is a good example of why you want nameplates turned on in ESO, you could run by this NPC without ever knowing that his job is to upgrade your mount. So if you turn on nameplates, and now we look at him, his title says stable master. So now we know that he will be upgrading our mount. I highly recommend starting with speed, and then carry capacity, and then finally stamina. Go with the order that suits you best. Just know that at first, your mount is incredibly slow, so you're really gonna wanna start with speed to get the most out of your mount. Once you've unlocked a mount on one character, all of your characters have access to that mount. However, any upgrades you do to that mount on that character are character specific, so if you max out your mount upgrades on one character, you'll have to max them out all over again on your next character. In Elder Scrolls Online, you can respec your character anytime you want. You can change your attribute points, you can change your skill points for a small fee anytime that you want. My favorite place to respec is in the zone of Grotwood at the Elden Root Way Shrine. The reason this is my favorite place to respec is because the respec shrines are right next to the Way Shrine. So you teleport in, you run a few steps, and boom, you're at the respec shrine. You don't have to do any hunting, you don't have to go looking for it, it's right there in front of you. As you can see, changing your attributes costs 3,200 gold, and if you come over to the skill respec shrine, the Stendar, mine is going to be 21,200 for a full respec, which means I take all of the base morphs out so that I can reapply those skills elsewhere, or I might just want to change the morphs for a fraction of the price, 2,200 gold. The cost of these is based on the number of skill points you have. I have a ton of skill points, so it's going to cost me considerably more than most people. It's even easier to change your champion points. Just open up your champion point menu, click the redistribute button at the bottom here, and it'll ask you if you're sure you want to respec, and you say confirm, and then you can pull points out of one place and move them into another at your will. One of the best ways to level up your character and your account in Elder Scrolls Online is to do your daily dungeon and your daily battleground. If you open up your group menu, and you look at the dungeon finder, random daily dungeon is gonna give us 100,000 XP. This scales with your level, so from one to 50, this continues to go up until it hits a 101,000 XP reward. Same exact reward for battlegrounds. Doing a random daily dungeon gives you 10 transmute crystals, which is also going to be great for your account. And for battlegrounds, if you're going to be doing your daily battlegrounds every day, and I highly recommend you do if you want to expedite the leveling process and you enjoy PvP, if you are going to participate in the battlegrounds, then make sure that you grab the battlegrounds daily quest. If you come to this NPC here in Vardenfell, or in any city that you're in, you go to the gladiator's quarters and pick up the battlegrounds daily quest. You say, I'm looking for a challenge, and he's going to give you a random daily quest. Once you've accepted it, it's going to tell you something to do, like play in five Battlegrounds matches. Once you've completed that, you get bonus XP and some other rewards. So if you're doing the Battlegrounds anyway, make sure you pick up the daily before you head in. The next thing I'm going to touch on is 
increasing your damage. Have you ever wondered why your damage is so low or have you ever felt that you just weren't doing enough damage? Maybe you feel that in dungeons you're putting out way less damage than other people that you see in the game are. There's a lot of reasons that that could be. It could be your champion points combined with your level, combined with your gear, and all of that is eventually going to add up to make you very powerful. But even with the best gear in the game and all of your skill points and champion points spec perfectly, your damage is not going to be very high if you don't do this one thing effectively and it's not light attacking i've already touched on that right it's going to be maintaining your dots and your uptimes on your buffs every time that a dot falls off it's very important that you apply it again the thing that is so important to doing damage in elder scrolls online is dot uptimes your damage over time abilities uptimes so you want to have them ticking at all times you don't want to apply them too early because that's a waste of your resources and you don't want to apply it too late because any second that they're not ticking is a DPS loss for you. And this is the thing that new players struggle with the most is reapplying a dot as soon as it falls off, not before and not too late. So if you find that you're struggling on your sustain, maybe you're reapplying your dots too early. You need to let them expire before you reapply them. But in order to keep your damage up, you need to reapply them the second that they do expire. So if I cast my Endless Hail and I'm going around and I'm fighting the boss and we can see here that it's ticking down, I've got nine, eight, seven seconds left, right? It's gonna tick down. And then the second that that expires, I wanna go ahead and make sure I switch to the back bar and reapply it again, right? And then go back about my rotation, doing my abilities and my other dots. And this is what you wanna do for every single dot that you have. You want to make sure that you are reapplying them as they fall off, right? So we're gonna just throw them all down. And you're just going to be doing this, right? And then so I would be coming here and I would be beating on it. Okay, that blew up. And then my detonating siphon is about to fall off. So we apply that. My archer is going to fall. So we reapply that. And then my endless hell is going to fall. So we reapply that. And so this is going to be the key to doing great damage in Elder Scrolls Online is tracking those dots, making sure to reapply them once they've fallen off. This is going to be the main difference between the players that are doing a ton of damage and the players that aren't. As a new player, this is all going to feel incredibly overwhelming. Down the road, it's going to become second nature for you to keep these applied. The fastest way to improve your uptime on your dots and improve your rotation in general is to come to a par summy like this one and just practice. Just sit here and beat on it and then practice keeping all of your abilities up at all times. And you'll start to get into kind of a rhythm and you'll sense like how long the abilities last. So you're you'll kind of begin to suspect hey that one's about to fall off soon i need to get ready to reapply it and it'll all be just become second nature to you the next thing that we're going to touch on is deconstructing gear deconstructing gear in elder scrolls online is incredibly important to your character in a lot of ways so don't feel bad about deconstructing those purple items that you just found that you don't really see yourself needing to use maybe it's the wrong armor type or maybe the set bonus isn't that great for you right now or maybe it's just low level at this point, you've been wearing it for a while. That's okay, don't feel bad about deconstructing it. Deconstructing it is great for your character. It's gonna give you materials that you can improve items with so that you can click upgrade on the upgrade tab, right? It's also going to level up your crafting line by deconstructing. Deconstructing armor is the fastest way to level the crafting line. The actual act of crafting armor gives very little XP towards leveling up these lines. So never craft items in order to expedite the leveling of the crafting tree. This is true for everything except for consumables, your potions, your poisons, and your foods and drinks. Those level fastest by creating items because there's no gear to deconstruct in those cases. So creating items is the only way to level those. However, as I mentioned for your gear and your jewelry crafting lines, the fastest way to level them up is gonna be to deconstruct them. So you click on the deconstruct tab, you click on the items you wanna deconstruct, and you deconstruct. This is gonna give you materials, which we'll see pop up right here and that'll allow you to upgrade items in the future to a higher quality make sure that as soon as you can you upgrade the extraction passive in these lines so that you're extracting better quality materials more often from the items that you deconstruct and before you begin upgrading gear make sure you go into the expertise it's the bottom passive in each piece of gear and the jewelry crafting line this is going to make it cost less than half as much to upgrade a piece of gear from purple to gold for instance for a piece of cloth armor it would typically cost you 20 of these materials to upgrade it to gold if you max out this line it's going to cost eight all right the next thing we're going to talk about is heavy attacks versus light attacks when do you use each one well basically for almost every build what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your light attacks between every ability 
and you're only going to use heavy attacks if you run out of resources because heavy attacks in this game aren't actually used to do more damage they're used to bring your resources back in so if you're slowing down to do a big slow heavy attack you're actually lowering your dps unless you're following a build that is built specifically for the purpose of being a heavy attack build these kind of builds do exist however they're pretty rare so what you'd want to do is line attack and ability line attack and ability right and let's say we're out of resources you're only going to attack with your heavy one time Okay, next let's talk about light attacks versus heavy attacks. Light attacks and Elder Scrolls Online are there to do damage and generate ultimate charge. Light attacks and Elder Scrolls Online are what you're gonna use to do damage in between abilities because abilities have a global cooldown. You can only cast an ability so fast, right? Because you have to wait for that global cooldown of one second to expire before you can cast the ability again. However, you can light attack while you're waiting for that ability to cool down. So we'll do a light attack and an ability in the same time that we could have done an ability. So the light attack isn't actually happening instead of an ability, it's happening in addition to the ability in the same time frame. What this allows us to do is crank out more damage. So don't think of light attacks as replacing the ability in your rotation. Light attacks are happening at the same time as the ability in the rotation in the same time window. Then there's heavy attacks. Heavy attacks in Elder Scrolls Online are only meant to be used to restore resources unless you're wearing gear that specifically buffs your heavy attacks. So if you run out of resources, then just go ahead and put one heavy attack in and then go back to spamming your abilities. So when it comes to heavy attacks, what you're gonna do is work one heavy attack in and then go back to your rotation. And then if you run out of resources again, you will heavy attack again to get enough resources to continue the rotation. You're only gonna heavy attack as much as you need to to keep the rotation going. You don't ever wanna be caught just repeatedly heavy attacking the enemy unless you really feel like you need to top yourself off for some part in the fight that's coming. The next thing I wanna talk about is something that a lot of players don't realize about dodge rolling. Every time you dodge roll, it places a buff and a debuff on you. So if we dodge roll, you'll see we have Immobilize Immunity and Dodge Fatigue. The immunity is going to do exactly what it says. It's going to make us immune to Immobilize abilities for a duration. So the part that people don't realize is that it places a Dodge Roll Fatigue buff on you. It's a debuff, actually, which means every time you dodge roll with that debuff on you, the dodge roll is costing more than the last one until it costs basically your whole stamina bar. So you never wanna dodge roll back to back if you don't have to because it's gonna cost a lot more. The easiest way to track whether or not you have that dodge roll debuff on you is to look at your feet. You'll notice after I dodge roll, there's those green lines coming from my feet. As long as those lines are there, I want to try to not dodge roll again because I still have the debuff on me. So we do this. Wait, so let's uh, let's go where we can see our feet. Dodge roll, and then you can see the lines and the fatigue buff. The fatigue buff disappears, and the green disappears as well. So if you're wondering, hey, is it safe to dodge roll again? As soon as those disappear, yes, it is. There you go. And that's the easiest way to make sure you don't burn through all of your stamina by repeatedly dodge rolling. I see a lot of players make this mistake in PvP and in PvE. Another neat thing about dodge rolling is that if you have a bow out, there's a bow passive that increases your move speed by 30% for four seconds after dodge roll. So you can take advantage of that and have your bow out, which is then gonna give you major expedition every time you dodge roll. Increasing our move speed by 30% while that's out. See how fast we run now? It's nice. So when you're trying to get from A to B, if you have a bow on the back bar or the front bar, just make sure to swap to that while you're running long distances and use the old passive to increase your mobility as you run around. All right, guys, and that concludes my list of rapid fire tips for new players. This should be a nice compliment to my much more thorough and much longer beginner guides. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and a subscribe so that you can be alerted when I post more Elder Scrolls Online content. Until next time, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day, night, or evening, wherever you might be. Be sure to check me out at twitch.tv slash luckyghosttv to watch me live if you want to hang out with someone else that loves Elder Scrolls Online, or if you just have questions you want to ask. I'm there, I'm live, and I'm answering questions every day. Until then, I'll see you in the next video, guys.